waiting in the wings. The universe. He speaks of senseless things. Is so much bigger. You and me. Than you realize. Of all the places I could be. I just want to be here with you. With 11 Oscar nominations under its belt, indie sci-fi hit Everything Everywhere All at Once could score big at tonight's 95th um, Academy Awards. Our own Stephanie Roll sat down with Oscar-nominated star Michelle Yeoh, who at 60 is not only celebrating the acclaim that she's getting, she's also thankful for the exposure it's giving to the Asian community as a whole. This momentum has to keep going forward. We need to say, but this is America as well. Like everything, everywhere, all at once. This is in America. This is an Asian fa immigrant family in America. And we have to hold up the mirror to ourselves and to our society and say, we are all here. And we're all here together. People say, oh, awards don't matter, but the Oscars are coming. They, uh, yes, it, it matters. matters. <laughs> Hell, it matters a lot. And it doesn't, it's not just mattering to me. It's shining the light on a, a part of the world of people that looks like me, who's never been included. So it matters. And yes, do I want it? Yes, I want it. Not just, yes, for me, but not just for me, but just to say we all can sit at the same table, work to t together and tell beautiful stories together. Joining me now is author um, and Hollywood historian Katie G. Salisbury. Katie, thanks for joining us on this. Um, we appreciate it. Speaking of Michelle Yeoh, right, um, still the only second Asian Best Actress nominee in Oscars history. If she pulls out a win tonight, she will be um, the first. If you look at this year overall, um, more Asian performers have been recognized this year than ever before. And according to um, IGN, which is a video game and entertainment media website, saying everything everywhere all at once is already the most awarded film ever, surpassing The Lord of the Rings, The Return of the King, which earned 101 major awards. Talk about the significance of tonight. Thank you for having me here. Um, yeah, I mean, it's been an incredible year to watch everything everywhere take off like this throughout the entire award season. Um, one thing that keeps playing in my mind is something that James Hong, um, one of the actors in the film, who's 94 this year, said at the SAG Awards. Um, you know, when he started acting 70 years ago, his first film was Clark with Clark Gable. And, you know, producers back then would say that Asians weren't box office. Um, they didn't sell mm -hmm. films. And I think that, um, you know, part of what I wanted to say in my op-ed was really that if you go back and look at the history, that's actually not true. Um, from the very beginning, we had people like Sasu Hayakawa in a 1915 silent film, The Cheat. He became an international star. Um, he, you know, women went crazy for him. Um, he became Hollywood's first heartthrob. Um, then we had Anna Mae Wong, who I'm writing a biography of. Um, in 1922, she was the leading lady in one of the first color films made by Technicolor and later went on to greater stardom. So this idea that Asians can't lead films and can't you know, resonate with audiences of all stripes um, is just kind of a false narrative we've been told. And, and I think now, 100 years later, we're finally seeing, um, you know, a film that could just, you know, blow past all the barriers. You, you mentioned your New York Times op-ed, and it's really beautifully written. I want to read a part of it that I thought really stood out um, to me. Asian Americans have been a part of Hollywood since its earliest days, making significant contributions despite formidable obstacles, but their names and artistry have been forgotten, overlooked, or willfully erased. And it all started with Anna Mae Wong, um, as you just mentioned, the first Asian movie star born in the United States. You mentioned you're, you're writing a, a, um, a biography of her. Um, what is her story, if you can tell us briefly? Sure. Um, I mean, she was an incredible woman uh, born in Los Angeles, 1905. Um, her dad operated a laundry not too far from Chinatown in downtown LA. And so she was in Los Angeles right at the time when movie studios were moving from New York and New Jersey to LA for the great weather. So she saw, you know, people just filming in the streets and she looked at that and said, you know what, I want to do that. I'm going to be mm -hmm. a movie star. 
And she did. She stuck her foot in the door, um, went to studios all over Hollywood while she was still in high school, um, started acting as an extra at age 13. Um, um, you know, she did see a lot of challenges throughout her career and lifetime. Um, when she got stuck, she was very resilient. In the 19, uh, 1928, she actually went to Europe um, where she could actually get leading lady parts and was very successful there and came back um, an international star and then got a contract with Paramount. But there were lots of kind of ebbs and flows like that throughout her career. Um, she most famously didn't get the part for the leading role in The Good Earth, which was a film about Chinese farmers. And um, so that's something that actually comes up quite a bit. Um, and you can kind of see the parallels between her and Michelle Yeoh this year. Um, you know, it's amazing to see Michelle in this type of role that, you know, she can express like the full range of her acting chops um, and get nominated for an Oscar. I think one of the other things I think about too is that you can't really you can never win an award for a role you're not given, you're not allowed to play. And that's kind of what happened to Anna Mae Wong. But I think um, it's kind of a sweet victory to see um, Michelle Yeoh and other actors um, from Everything Everywhere all at once this year um, in a position to win and maybe even sweep the Oscars this year. We will be watching. That is for darn sure. Katie G. Salisbury, uh, we thank you.